Josh Peacock, um, thanks very much for joining us uh, via Zoom. I know it's it's a busy day in the life of a, of a service person when you are not just at work, but also preparing for the Under-23 Inter-Service Championship, which starts next week. What's the feeling like for you personally and, and in the camp? Yeah, so me me personally feeling really good. Uh, the lads are all really excited. We've had quite a few new additions as well, uh, which have come through. So really exciting for them, really exciting to see... Uh, what they can add to the squad uh, as well as on the pitch and off the pitch. Um, yeah, everyone's everyone's really excited. There's a nice a nice buzz around the camp at the minute. Uh, it's only it's less less than a week away now, um, so everyone's everyone's getting in the mindset. Everyone's getting right, uh, and it's all about not peaking too early. I feel uh, not trying to bring everything in the next few days, so then we hit a low by the time of the game. We really need to time it right use the lads we've got in the camp, use the experience we've got in the camp and hopefully by the time Wednesday comes around, Wednesday night, uh, we should be riding that wave at the top. When you say the the when you've got new lads in, is it the enthusiasm they bring or is it a bit of competition for places? Is it a bit of the unknown or is it kind of all of the above? Yeah, yeah, I'd say all of the above really. You, you really can't replicate that um, sense of competition when you're in the camp and you see someone else come in who's playing your position, you really can't replicate that any other way. Um, it really gives you something more to drive at, something more to fight to, because in the end of the day, everyone wants to pull on that, that shirt. Um, only a certain amount of squad numbers means that there are going to be some people left out. And as we've already been told, it is going to be brutal, uh, as it always is. Um, I can't remember one into service year that hasn't been brutal. Uh, players who you play with all season, and then it comes to the last squad and they miss out by a fraction. But that's just the reality of inter-services. It's the reality of any sport, really, playing at such a high level. You need to prepare yourself for that, just in case. Last year, um, you know, you, you kind of almost overturned the uh, overturned the form book to, un unfortunately, from your perspective, give the Army the overall title. Um now, yeah. just a quick reflection on that. I mean, because it was so competitive, and 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 in my little preview, I put we we're putting onto the website I said that <clears throat> that fire at Whitney potentially changed everything because <clears throat> you then had to play the game at the end rather than at the start, the Navy game at the end rather than the start. Was that right on reflection? Is that kind of accurate, or is that did, how how disruptive was that for everybody? Um. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's the first time anything like that has ever happened to me personally. Um, yeah, it, it, it changed quite a bit, I feel. Um, obviously, when we turned up to Whitney, uh, ready to play the Navy, everyone was ready. Um, we had what we thought was the correct team set up. We had the right players in the right places. We had the right mindset. Again, I spoke about riding that wave before the game and trying to really get to that high point, and I feel like we were there. Um, and it was as as we were warming up uh, that the, the whole fire happened, and uh, and yeah, it was it was definitely a strange one, definitely a strange one. But yeah, I mean, we came we came back, we played played the army. Obviously, it didn't didn't go our way. Great great game of rugby though. Uh, really really up and down for us. Uh, and then yeah, ended up playing the navy at Basingstoke, and and yeah yeah ended up beating them there. Um, great, great game for us. Great game for the RAF. Uh, I feel like we we showed in Basingstoke what we could do. And if we can bring that to this year's into services, uh, I think things are looking good this year. Yeah, because that, that game, if you'd have played that first and you'd have got into the Army game with the win under your belt, rather than going into that game a little bit cold, so to speak, from, from not having that. So, I mean... How, what do you learn from that experience, though, in terms of you know in in your in the in the written interview is that you know you've talked about you know uh, coming in and, and being one of the senior players, uh, having the senior experience, and but also from the experience from last year is that what do you take into that in terms of the importance of preparation and mindset across the across uh, a, a three week campaign? Yeah, so one thing I think last year taught us in particular, was to expect the unexpected. Uh, I don't think it was on anyone's bingo card that we turn up to Whitney and the clubhouse had set on fire. Uh, I don't think that's something that uh, anyone could have foreseen, really. Um, 
but yeah, really, really having to get into the mindset, going out on the pitch, warming up, and then snapping out of it so quickly once we knew obviously the game wouldn't have been played. Uh, I feel like the coaches did a really good job of getting us back up for the game in the following days. Um, the whole training camp after that, the whole um, preparation, they spoke to us about nutrition, they spoke to us uh, about everything to do with it. The the It really came from the coaches, the mindset of, look, we don't know what's going to happen, um, but this is what we do know. We've got the army next week and that's that's something that we need to focus on. We kind of had to put it behind us uh, and really, really focus on the upcoming game against the army. Um, yeah, yeah, I believe so. Just a, a quick reflection before we look ahead to this year's championship on, you know, your first senior IS experience in this year, you know, it, um, that, that game at, at, at Plymouth in particular, when, you know, you looked dead and buried and then came back and only lost by one point, you know, how, how in retrospect, how gutting was that experience? Or how, well, sorry. Oh, yeah. Cutting from a yeah. team, but also, you know, your own personal pride in terms of, you know, um, in terms of getting to that level. Yeah, of course. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a massive step up, I'd say, uh, going to the senior level. Uh, not not just the rugby, the whole the whole camp, uh, the coaches have the way it's treated. Um, you are you are treated like a professional when when you are there. Uh and that and that goes without saying they expect the best from you as well. They they expect you to act like a professional. Uh and and yeah, especially that that game down in Plymouth. Uh yeah, we showed we showed great great heart, I think, to get to get back into the game. Um the lads on the pitch did did, did so well to bring it back. Uh but yeah, great, great game of rugby. Unfortunately it didn't go our way. Uh that that particular game, but um, yeah, we're showing some real promise, real promise in the seniors at the minute. What do you expect going into this year? Then you know there are, and we'll, we'll no doubt talk close to the time. But you know, there's been a there's obviously been significant changes at the coaching level. Um, it, it, does that kind of invigorate you as a, and the rest of the under twenty three players in terms of thinking? Okay, so this is a, a it's a fresh start for for everybody. Yeah, yeah, of course it does. Um, I believe that there'll be a few more 23s players coming up this year. I mean, the game that they played against Rams, unfortunately, I I wasn't there, but there was, I believe, six or seven of the under-23s lads who played uh, in the last game for the 23s, who played that Rams game for the seniors. There was about four or five of them who started that game. Um, so I believe the more players you can get in the squad from the 23s, the tighter the gap will be, um, which will then be able to feed to feed that squad. We should be we should be looking to feed the squad with the 23s players. I believe that's that's the best way we can do it. And with the talent we've got in the 23 squad at the minute, I feel like it won't be too far until you see quite a few more names come through who will be getting the first cap and will be going on to get quite a lot of caps in the first team. And and that experience as well, having twenty threes playing men's rugby or playing adult, say adults, you're all adults, but playing <laughs> you know playing senior rugby, yeah, yeah and yeah. then coming into the twenty threes, the kind of the physical preparation because it is such as as you said, it's such a physical step up to then have that that run out against a, a semi pro team um, a couple of weeks before playing under twenty threes. How beneficial is that? Even if it even if it comes maybe at the expense of cohesion or experience playing as a as an under 23s team yeah so what the lads who went and played that game have brought back to the camp i i believe is is a bit of a mindset a bit of a mindset change uh if i'm honest which is so helpful for the lads who are a bit newer uh i mean you've got i mean you've got lads who this is the first is you've got lads that this might be the first time pulling on a raft shirt. Um, so the level of experience is all over the place and pumping lads up to that level and then bringing, bringing them back to the next 23s camp, uh, hopefully we'll see they'll take it upon themselves to lead the team and share their experience with people. That's, that's something that I believe is so important with 
if if you have the experience there, if you've gone to a different level and played at a higher level, when when coming to 23s, sharing that experience and sharing that knowledge with the lads, especially in the same position, is so important, so important. And do you think this year's um, 23s is almost too close to call? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. I believe so. You want to... Yeah, you're always you're always going to back yourself. You wouldn't you wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, and I'm sure the lads from the navy and the army will, will say the exact same thing as me. Um, but yeah, yeah, we've got we've got a very very good chance this year. Quite quietly confident, I say. Quite quietly confident as always.